Christoph Martin Wieland, German, V. Land, the 5th of September 1733 to the 20th of January 1813, was a German poet and writer. He is best remembered for having written the first building's Roman, Geschichte des Agathon, as well as the epic Oberon, which formed the basis for Karl Maria von Weber's opera of the same name. His thought was representative of the cosmopolitanism of the German Enlightenment, exemplified in his remark, "Only a true cosmopolitan can be a good citizen." Biography He was born in Oberholzheim now part of Eichstetten, which then belonged to the free imperial city of Biberach and Der Riss in the southeast of the modern-day state of Baden-Württemberg. His father, who was pastor in Oberholzheim and subsequently in Biberach, took great pains with his son's education. From the town school of Biberach he passed on at the age of 12 to the Klosterberg Gymnasium, near Magdeburg. He was a precocious child, and when he left school in 1749 was widely read in the Latin classics and the leading contemporary French writers. Amongst German poets, his favorites were Brockus and Klopstock. During the summer of 1750, he fell in love with a cousin, Sophie Gutermann, and this love affair inspired him to plan his first ambitious work, Die Natur der Dinge, The Nature of Things, 1752, a didactic poem in six books. In 1750 he went to the University of Tübingen as a student of law, but his time was mainly taken up with literary studies. The poems he wrote at the university—Hermann, an epic published by F. Munker, 1886, Zwölf moralisch Brief in Versen 12 Moral Letters in Verse, 1752, Anti Ovid 1752—are pietistic in tone and dominated by the influence of Klopstock. They attracted the attention of the Swiss literary reformer, J. J. Bodmer, who invited Wieland to visit him in Zurich in the summer of 1752. After a few months, he felt little sympathy with Wieland as, two years earlier, he had felt himself with Klopstock, and the friends parted, but Wieland remained in Switzerland until 1760, spending the last year, at Bern where he obtained a position as private tutor. Here he became intimate with Jean-Jacques Rousseau's friend Julie de Bondelli. Wieland's tastes had changed, the writings of his early Swiss years. Der Gepruft Abraham The Trial of Abraham's Faith, 1753, Sympathy in 1756, Empfindungen eines Christen 1757, were still in the manner of his earlier writings, but with the tragedies, Lady Johanna Grey 1758, and Clementina von Poretta 1760, the latter based on Samuel Richardson's Sir Charles Grandison, the epic fragment Cyrus first five cantos, 1759, and the moral story in dialogues, Erispes und Panthea 1760, Wieland, as Gotthold Lessing said, forsook the ethereal spheres to wander again among the sons of men. In Cyrus, he had been inspired by the deeds of Frederick the Great to write a poem exhibiting the ideal of a hero. Erispes und Panthea is based on an episode from the Cyropedia of Xenophon. Wieland's conversion was completed at Biberach, having returned in 1760 as director of the Chancery. The monotony of his life here was relieved by the friendship of a Count Stadion, whose library in the castle of Warthausen, not far from Biberach, was well stocked with French and English literature. Wieland met again his early love Sophie Gutermann, who had become the wife of Hofrat La Roche, then manager of Count Stadion's estates. In Don Silvia von Rosalva 1764, a romance in imitation of Don Quixote, he held up to ridicule his earlier faith and in the Kamisch Erzelungen 1765, he gave his extravagant imagination only too free a reign. More important is the novel Geschichte des Agathon 1766 in which, under the guise of a Greek fiction, Wieland described his own spiritual and intellectual growth. This work, which Lessing recommended as a novel of classic taste," marks an epic in the development of the modern psychological novel. Of equal importance was Whelan's translation of 22 of Shakespeare's plays into prose 8 vols, 1762 to 1766. It was the first attempt to present the English poet to the German people in something approaching entirety. With the poems Musarian Oder die Philosophie der Grazien (1768), Idris (1768), Combabus (1770), Der Neue Amadis (1771), Wieland opened the series of light and graceful romances in verse, which appealed so irresistibly to his contemporaries and acted as an antidote to the sentimental excesses of the subsequent Sturm und Drang movement. 
Musarian advocates a rational unity of the sensual and spiritual. Amadis celebrates the triumph of intellectual over physical beauty. Wieland married Anna Dorothea von Hillenbrand, July 8, 1746 to November 9, 1801, on October 21, 1765. They had 14 children. Wieland's daughter Sophia Katharina Susanna Wieland October 19, 1768 to September 1, 1837 married philosopher Karl Leonard Reinhold 1757 to 1823 on May 18, 1785. Between 1769 and 1772, Wieland was a professor of philosophy at the University of Erfurt. In his Verklater Amor, Cupid Accused. He defended amatory poetry, and in the Dialogen des Diogenes von Sinop he gave a general vindication of his philosophical views. In 1772 he published Der Goldin Spiegel oder die Konig van Schesian, a pedagogic work in the form of Oriental stories. This attracted the attention of Anna Amalia, Duchess of Saxe Weimar Eisenach, and resulted in his appointment as tutor to her two sons, the Duke Karl August and his brother Prince Constantine, at Weimar. With the exception of some years spent at Osmanstedt, where in later life he bought an estate, Weimar remained Wieland's home until his death. Turning his attention to dramatic poetry, he wrote opera librettos such as Wall des Hercules, Choice of Hercules, and Alcest by Anton Schweitzer. In 1773, he founded Der Teutsch Merker, which under his editorship 1773 became the most influential literary review in Germany. His views, as exhibited therein, however, showed so much of the narrow conventional spirit of French criticism, that he was attacked by Goethe in the satire Gotter, held in und Wieland, gods, heroes and Wieland. This Wieland answered with great good nature, recommending it to all who were fond of wit and sarcasm. Goethe and Johann Gottfried Herder were soon drawn to Weimar, where the Duchess Anna Amalia formed a circle of talent and genius, later also joined by Friedrich Schiller. He was also a librettist for the Sailor Theatrical Company of Abel Sailor. Of his later writings the most important are the admirable satire on German provinciality. The most attractive of all his prose writings. Die Abderiten, eine sehr wahrscheinlich Geschichte A Very Probable History of the Abderites, 1774, translated into French by Antoine Gilbert Griffet de la Baume and the charming poetic romances, Das Wintermarchen 1776, Das Sommermarchen 1777, Geron der Adelige 1777, Bervante oder die Wunsch 1778, a series culminating with Wieland's poetic masterpiece, The Romantic Epic of Oberon 1780. In 1780 he created the Singspiel Rosamund with the composer Anton Schweitzer. In Wieland's later novels, such as the Geheimi Geschichte des Philosophen Peregrinus Proteus 1791 and Aristipp und Einige seiner Zeitgenossen 1800-1802, a didactic and philosophic tendency obscures the small literary interest they possess. He also translated Horace's Satires 1786, Lucian's Works 1788 to 1789, Cicero's Letters 1808 FF, and from 1796 to 1803 he edited the Atisha's Museum which did valuable service in popularizing Greek studies. Wieland was also strongly influenced by the French fairy tale vogue of the 18th century. He published a collection of tales entitled Die Schinisten 1786 to 1789, which included three original tales: Der Stein der Weissen, The Philosopher's Stone, Timander und Melissa, and Der Druide oder die Salamanderin und die Bildsaal, The Druid or the Salamander and the Painted Pillar. Wieland had a strong influence on the German literature of his time. He died in Weimar. Editions Wieland's Samtalici work, Complete Works, appeared in 1794 1802, 45 vols. Collections of Wieland's letters were edited by his son Ludwig and by H. Gessner. His letters to Sophie Laroche by F. Horn. Later editions of Wieland's Samtalici work, 1818–1828, 53 vols, 1839–1840, 36 vols, and 1853–1858, 36 vols. Then 1879–1882 in 40 vols, edited by H. Dunzer. 
There are numerous editions of selected works, notably by Heinrich Prohl in Kirchner's Deutsche Nationalliteratur Vols. 51–56, 1883–1887, by F. Munker 6 vols, 1889, by W. Bolsch 4 vols, 1902. Jessamel T. Schriften, apt. I. Work. apt. 2. Übersetzungen, ed., by Deutsche Kommission der Königlich Proischen Akademie der Wissenschaften since 1945 ed., by Deutsche Akademie der Wissenschaften zu Berlin, since 1969 ed., by Akademie der Wissenschaften der DDR by Hans Werner Seifert, Berlin 1909-1975. Completed volumes with accompanying commentary, I, 6, I, 9, I, 12-15, I, 18, I, 20-23, 2, 1-3, volumes without accompanying commentary, I, 1, I, 2, I, 3, I, 4, I, 7, I, 10, I, 17, 2, 4, 2, 9-10, volumes missing, I, 5, I, 16, I, 19, 2, 5-8, critical edition, Weiland's Briefwechsel, 20 volumes, ed., by Deutsche Akademie der Wissenschaften zu Berlin, Institut für Deutsche Sprache und Literatur since Vol. 2, 1968 by Hans Werner Seifert, since Vol. 3, 1975 ed., by Akademie der Wissenschaften der DDR, Zentralinstitut für Literaturgeschichte by Hans Werner Seifert, since Vol. 7, 1992 ed., by Akademie der Wissenschaften Berlin by Siegfried Scheibe, since 1993 by Berlin Brandenburgische Akademie der Wissenschaften by Siegfried Scheibe, Berlin, 1963-2007. Weiland's work. Historisch kritisch Ausgabe, edited by Klaus Manger and Jan Philipp Riemsma. Berlin, New York 2008 F. Critical edition. <laughs> Notes Further reading J. G. Gruber, C. M. Weiland's Leben, 4 vols, 1827-1828 Heinrich Doring, C. M. Wieland, 1853, Christoph Martin Wieland, Ein Biographisches Denkmal, 1840 J. W. Lobel, C. M. Wieland, 1858 Heinrich Prohol, Lessing, Wieland, Heinz, 1877. L. F. Ofterdinger, Weiland's Leben und Werken in Schweben und in der Schweiz, 1877. R. Kyle, Wieland und Reinhold, 1885. F. Thalmer, Uber Weiland's Klasses Sprache und SM, 1894. M. Dahl, Wieland und die Antique, 1896. K. Buckner, Wieland und die Weimannsche Buchhandlung. Zur Geschichte deutscher Literatur und deutschen Buchhandels 1871. See also M. Koch's article in the Allgemeine Deutsche Biographie, 1897. C. A. Bemmer, Stern und Wieland, 1899. J. M. R. Lenz, Verthydiging des Herrn Wieland gegen die Woken, 1902. W. Lenz, Wieland's Verhaltnis zu Spencer, Pope und Swift, 1903. L. Herzl, Weiland's Beziehungen zu den Deutschen Romantikern, 1904. E. Heyman, Weiland's Bildungsseidel, 1907. C. Elson, Weiland and Shaftesbury, 1913. H. Bem, Heinrich von Kleist und C. M. Weiland, 1914. V. Michel, C. M. Wieland, La Formation et l'Evolution de Sun Esprit Jusqu'in 1772, 1938. M. G. Bach Wieland's Attitude Toward Woman and Her Cultural and Social Relations, 1966. Jan Philipp Riemsma, Das Buch vom Ich, Christoph Martin Wieland's Aristipp und Einige Seiner Zeitgenossen, 1993. Jan Philipp Riemsma, Der Lieb Maskentons, Aufsatz zum Werk Christoph Martin Wieland's, 1999.